Homeworld 2 is a real-time strategy video game sequel to Homeworld, developed by Relic Entertainment and released in 2003 by now defunct publisher Sierra Entertainment. Its story concerns Hiagara's response to a new enemy called the VAYGR. Its gameplay takes a new direction with the enhancement of its graphics and audio. In contrast to the closely equivalent Kushan and Taidan forces of the original game, VAYGR and Hyagaran spaceships differ significantly in design and application. <laughs> Gameplay Homeworld 2 shares the movement system and three-dimensional play area of its predecessor. Units are moved three-dimensionally using a combination of mouse movements and key presses to modify the Z-axis of the destination position. Gameplay in Homeworld 2 depends on so-called resource units, Rus, which are collected by Harvester Craft. Rus are the currency for both ship creation and technology research, placing limits on what combination of shipbuilding and new technology research can be carried out in a single game. The player's fleet is centered on the mothership, the destruction of which results in an immediate game over in a single player game, and is a critical loss in a multiplayer game. The mothership is capable of constructing all but the very largest ships, which must be built using shipyards the game states these are built at orbital facilities and arrive via hyperspace. The mothership can also build carriers, which themselves can build any ship from the fighter, corvette and frigate families. Although the mothership is initially the center of new research, carriers and shipyards can build their own onboard research labs. All units in Homeworld 2 are starships of various classes, from small to large, fighter, corvette, frigate and capital ship. Although the larger ships are more powerful and durable, they are also much slower and less maneuverable. Ships within each class specialize in certain areas and are vulnerable to certain other ships, although there may be ships in the same class that do not share the same vulnerability. Ion cannon frigates, for instance, are very vulnerable to fighters due to the unwieldy albeit powerful, nature of their single weapon. Flak frigates, however, are specifically intended for use against fighters, but lack the firepower to defend themselves against other frigates. Effective use of the relative strengths of each ship is essential for success. Homeworld 2 allows players to co-opt enemy ships using specialized frigates, much like the original game. These maneuver close to enemy vessels and dispatch boarding parties, which capture the vessel after a short period of time. Capture can be sped up by using multiple frigates against the same target simultaneously. However, these frigates are completely exposed to attack during the boarding process, and all capturing progress is lost if they are destroyed. Although Homeworld 2 nominally has no difficulty setting, it features dynamic difficulty adjustments, in which the strength of a level's opposition is determined using the composition of the fleet the player enters the level with the fleet remaining at the end of the previous level. This led to an exploit in which players retired all of their ships at the end of the previous level, reducing them to Rus, and entering the next level with a huge store of raw materials to use against a very weak enemy. The game also codifies the support caps introduced in Homeworld, and explained in Homeworld, Cataclysm, by placing overall limits on how many ships of each class the player may control at once. Mission objectives in the single-player game are primarily achieved by destroying key enemy elements, capturing particular targets, protecting certain units for a particular amount of time, or towing an object back to the mothership. In addition to the storyline objectives, a significant portion of the missions require the destruction of all enemy units. Multiplayer 
Homeworld 2 can be played online with five other players. Topic Plot Homeworld 2 continues the struggle of the Higarans and their leader Karen Sajet. While in the original game the player could select either the Kushan or Taidan races, in the sequel the Kushan are established as the canonical protagonists. During the events of the original game and played out in the prequel Deserts of Karak, the Kushan race of the planet Karak discovered the wreckage of the Kar Toba, an interstellar transport starship, in the Great Desert. Inside, they found an ancient hyperspace core, and a galactic map etched on a piece of stone that showed that the Kushan had been transplanted to Karak long ago, and pointed the way to their long-lost homeworld, Hiagara. The Kushan built an enormous self-sufficient mothership, powered by the hyperspace core from the Kar Toba, to carry 600,000 people across the galaxy to Hiagara. Throughout their journey, the Kushan battled the forces of the Taidan Empire, which had exiled them, and endured numerous other hardships along the way. With the aid of the Bentuzi, a powerful and enigmatic race of traders, the Kushan reached Hiagara and destroyed the Taidan Emperor, laying claim to their homeworld. The story continues that the hyperspace core found in the Kar Toba was the second of only three known to exist in the galaxy, left behind by an ancient race known as the Progenitors. The first core was possessed by the Bentuzi, the third was lost until approximately 100 years after the exiles reclaimed Hiagara, found by a Vayger warlord named Makan. With his massive flagship empowered by the Third Corps, Makan began a campaign of conquest, seizing control of the remnants of the Taidan Empire and surrounding star systems, and—as of the beginning of Homeworld II—began attempts to capture Hiagara. The story states that religious beings of the galaxy consider the discovery of the Third Corps to announce the end times, during which Sajuk, thought to be an immensely powerful being, will return. Makan believes himself to be the Sajuk Kar, a messianic figure that will unite the Three Corps and herald the return of Sajuk. The game begins with the commissioning of a new mothership, the Pride of Hiagara, at the Great Derelict at Tanis. The Pride of Hiagara is similar in shape and design to the original mothership and commanded by Karen Sajet, as in the original game. The ship is attacked by the Vayger during the final stages of construction, but escapes to rally the Hyagaran fleet. Makan's fleet lays siege to Hiagara, and the warlord offers a deal to the Higarans, if they surrender the second corps to him, he will spare their homeworld. The Bentuzi inform the Higarans that they must find Balkora Gate, left behind by the progenitors, behind which is something essential for stopping either the Vayger threat, the end times, or both. The Higarans find a progenitor dreadnought in the wreckage of a massive vessel, and find that it is required to unlock Balkora Gate. The great harbor ship of Bentus, last of the Bentuzi, sacrifices itself after being ambushed in a progenitor AI attack, leaving its core for the Higarans to claim in order to stop Makan. But the warlord learns of the Balkora Gate as well, and the game's penultimate mission takes place on the other side, where Higarans and Vayger alike discover that Sajuk is in fact a mothership-sized progenitor starship, with sockets for the three hyperspace cores. The Hyagaran fleet engages Makan's flagship and destroys it, claiming the third core from the wreckage. With all three cores, the Higarans reactivate Sajuk, abandoning the pride of Hiagara, and bring it back to Hiagara to break the Vayger siege, destroying the Vagar's planet killer weapons and saving Hiagara from destruction. Sajuk is later found to be the key to a galaxy wide network of hyperspace gates, ushering in a new age of trade and prosperity for all civilized races in the galaxy, the age of Karen Sajet, the true Sajuk Kar. Characters 
Like the original Homeworld, there are only a handful of individual characters with a prominent place in the narrative. Karen Sajet, the main protagonist, the scientist who volunteered to become the living core of the mothership during the original game, returns once again as Fleet Command on the Pride of Hiagara to lead the Hiagaran fleet against the VAYGR. She is voiced by Jennifer Don Graveness, taking over for Heidi Ernest the original voice of Fleet Command in the first game and in the training missions for Cataclysm. It was announced at PAX South in 2015 that the voice change was due to personal circumstances that left Ernest unable to reprise her role as Fleet Command, though she returned to the role for the remastered collection. Fleet Intelligence, much like in the original game, Fleet Intelligence is a male character who analyzes sensor data and generates mission objectives during the single-player campaign, also like in the original game, he is not heard in multiplayer. He is voiced by Eli Gabe in the original release. Michael Sunsick, the voice of Fleet Intelligence in the first game, returned to the role for the remastered edition in 2015. Captain Sobin, commander of the Furin Shaw fleet that aids in the defense of the Pride of Hiagara during a VAYGR attack. Captain Aloham, commander of a Keith Nabal shipyard that eventually joins the mothership fleet. Makan, the main antagonist, Makan is a warlord of the VAYGR and ruler of an interstellar domain that includes the remnants of the Taidan Empire. He believes himself to be the Sajuk Kar, the chosen one who will unite the three cores and bring about the return of Sajuk. Unlike the Taidan Emperor in the original homeworld, Makan is a battle-hardened warlord and brilliant strategist. He is voiced by Mark Oliver. <laughs> Factions. There are four major factions in the storyline of Homeworld 2, the Higarans, the VayGR, the Bentuzi, and the Progenitor. However, only two, the Higarans and VayGR, are playable. Higarans <laughs> <laughs> The Higarans are the playable race in the single-player game. Their story began in the original Homeworld as a number of Kushan clans on a desert planet called Karak. They detected a large metal formation in the Great Desert after a deep space scanning satellite encountered an error in its propulsion system, which turned it around and scanned the planet's Great Desert. It was revealed to be an ancient spaceship, turned into a city, known as the Kar Toba. Inside was a stone with a galactic map and the text, Hiagara, which, despite other linguistic drifts, still meant, home, in every dialect on Karak. The discovery of the stone served as a powerful enough symbol to end all wars and unite the entire global population into an effort to travel into space to discover their origins. The technology discovered allowed the Kushan to build a massive mothership which took 60 years, according to the opening cutscene. However, no computer was powerful enough to command the mothership, as there would be too much data to be processed at any one time. A young scientist named Karen Sajet volunteered to become the living core of the mothership after creating the technology to neurologically link her brain to the mothership's systems. This action, however, led Karen to become inseparable from the core, but it is revealed at the end of Homeworld 1, she survived being disconnected from the vessel. Within the car Toba was one of the three known hyperspace cores, which allowed the mothership to perform its hyperspace jumps. After generations in exile and a perilous journey across known and unknown space, the Kushan, Higarans fought their way to Hiagara, reclaimed their homeworld, and became a well-established nation controlling much of the inner ring of the galaxy. During the game it is learned that the Kushan were the exiles of the Hyagaran Empire, which had historically spanned throughout a great area of space within the galactic core. 
However, the Taidan emperor believed the Hyagaran expanse was too great, and thus under duress forced them into exile. The Hyagaran refugees fled to Karak, secretly taking their hyperspace core with them. However, the true test for the Higarans may not be the new threat of the warring Vayygr, but a prophecy that Sajuk, he whose hand shapes what is, will return and herald the coming of the end time. The Higarans, as always, are divided on religious lines. A number of apocalyptic sects see portents of doom everywhere. To them, the rumor that their enemies the Vayygr are the Sajuk Kar. The Chosen One is a dire omen and proof of Sajuk's anger. In Homeworld 2, a new mothership has been created, named the Pride of Hiagara. Karen Sajet must once again prepare for war. Shortly after the Pride of Hiagara was built, the Vayygr attacked in order to destroy it. The Pride of Hiagara escaped with its hyperspace core newly installed. The main story line picks up from this point. The Pride of Hiagara has the same role as the Mothership did in the original Homeworld, although it now bears a more militaristic look in keeping with its new role. While the old Kushan Mothership was the heart and soul of the Kushan people during their Great Migration, the Pride of Hiagara is the flagship of their Space Navy. It is the mobile base from which all the crews and resources are ultimately derived. It is the only vessel that cannot be manufactured or replaced. VAYGR The VAYGR are a warrior clan originally from Ve, an isolated planet in the eastern fringes of the galaxy. The discovery of early and inefficient hyperdrives enabled these warriors to travel and raid widely across their sector of space. Always a nomadic race, the strongest warlords brought groups together into crusades. A Vayygr crusade is entirely independent. The build capacity of their motherships also known as flagships combined with the resource harvesting of their individual craft enable them to live self-sufficiently in space. Communication between separate Vayygr crusades is minimal. Over the centuries, the Vayygr have integrated many separate races, civilizations and technologies including, as is learned from the opening scenes of the game, what remains of the Taidan Empire. The planet Ve is now forgotten, the name they take is its only living reminder. Constant infighting between separate crusades and struggling for position among warlords has kept the Eastern Fringe a war zone for a long time. However, under the guidance of the warlord Makan, the various Vayygr tribes have formed into a cohesive force. While still operating independently, the overall strategic aims of the Vayygr have been coordinated and focused by Makan, a master strategist. Homeworld 2 opens with a massive Vayygr invasion of Higaran territory. However, by the end of the single-player campaign, Makan was destroyed at Balkora and the main invasion force defeated in the Siege of Hiagara. It is not clear if remnants of the Vayygr continue to exist in the Outer Rims. <laughs> Bentuzi The Bentuzi are an enigmatic race of highly advanced, nomadic traders. Calling themselves, the Unbound, the Bentuzi have no known leader and are all cybernetically integrated into their ships much like Karen Sajet but believed to be much more advanced. The Bentuzi are a very ancient, wise race who do not claim any planet for themselves, instead opting to live exclusively among the stars. It would probably be impossible for the Bentuzi to even survive outside of their ships, since they are physically connected to them. The Bentuzi are one of the three races to possess hyperspace cores, along with the Vayygr and the Higarans. 
They made their debut in the original homeworld and traded the Higarans the ion cannon technology. They also brought the Galactic Council to Higara to persuade the Taidan to allow the Higarans to have their homeworld again. The Bentuzi were instrumental in revealing the history of the Higarans. In Homeworld, Cataclysm they helped perfect the Siege Cannon and gave the designs for the Super Acolyte in the end. They are seen leaving the Homeworld galaxy in a mass exodus, due to the events in Cataclysm. At the beginning of Homeworld 2, the Bentuzi are described as having one ship, the Great Harborship of Bentus. It was revealed that 4,000 years before the events of Homeworld, the Hyagaran Empire's fleet abused the use of their hyperspace core. Due to Bentuzi pressure, they were ordered to give it up, but in an act of defiance they attacked the Bentuzi fleet. As a consequence, the Hyagaran ships were obliterated by the Bentuzi, enabling the vengeful Taidan to conquer Hiagara and drive the people into exile on the desert planet Karak. The Bentuzi thus are indirectly responsible for the Hyagaran exile and felt compelled to help the Kushans return to their homeworld. Because of their guilt the Bentuzi adopted a peaceful existence. Eventually, the Bentuzi ship self-destructs to save the Higarans from an attack by progenitor keepers, thus apparently ending the presence of the Bentuzi in the homeworld universe. Topic: The Progenitors. The Progenitors were an immensely powerful and technologically advanced race that apparently died out about 10,000 years ago. Much of what remains from them is found in the Karos graveyard, Great Wasteland, an area full of spaceship derelicts and debris. The three hyperspace cores were created by the progenitors in the forge module of one of their greatest spaceships, which was also the birth for the dreadnoughts. One of the cores was discovered by the Bentuzi 6,000 years ago, which brought forth a great age of galactic prosperity by making possible interstellar travel over long distances. The second core was discovered by the pre-Exodus Higarans, who through misuse of the device ended up being exiled to Karak. The third core was found by the Vayygr. The central conflict of Homeworld 2 revolves around acquiring all three cores and unlocking their secrets. The progenitors possessed great knowledge of interstellar and even intergalactic travel. Their hyperspace gate network, which uses the Eye of Aaron as its main gate, is one of the many constructed by this ancient race which possibly seeded intelligent life throughout the universe. Sajuk, he whose hand shapes what is, also called the Great Maker, was before the Homeworld II plot thought to be a god in the eyes of many races in the galaxy. Though this theology is not disproven by the events of the game, Sajuk was also the name of a progenitor and a warship. It was found by the Vayygr at the center of the galaxy, and accessed through the hyperspace gate at Balcora. It is only reactivated when the trinity of the three hyperspace cores is restored within it. How the core trinity was initially separated thousands of years earlier is not spoken of. Oddly, Makan, through some supposed influence of the Third Core, foresaw that the Higarans would bring the other two cores to him, instead of the Vayygr having to fight to acquire them. Like the Dreadnought, Sajuk is armed with a phased cannon array, though it is several times more powerful than a Dreadnought's, and can easily destroy even Mothership-class vessels in a few volleys. Defensive weapons include numerous pulsed energy arrays along the hull. It is also one of only two ships in the single-player game that can be commanded to make tactical hyperspace jumps. In addition to a near-perfect resistance to conventional weapons, the Sajuk is the only weapon capable of damaging and destroying the Vayygr planet killers, themselves based upon Bentuzi technology. 
In the game's epilogue, Sajuk is the key to activating the long-forgotten Eye of Aaron, a portal to a galaxy-wide hyperspace network left behind by the progenitors. This activation signaled both the end of the third time that the Bentuzi had prophesied, and the beginning of the Age of Sajet. It is named this because Karen Sajet was now linked to the Sajuk vessel in much the same way she was to both the Kushan mothership from Homeworld and the pride of Hiagara. The meaning of the phrase Sajuk Kar is cloudy, as at least three translations are heard in game Manipulator, Chosen One, and Custodian. <laughs> development Homeworld 2 uses a proprietary scripting language, known as SCAR scripting at Relic, in addition to others. The SCAR language was created for the express purpose of coding in Homeworld 2 and deals mainly with events in the single-player campaign zooming out with the camera, creating enemy ships, moving the player to the next level, etc. Homeworld 2 also makes use of version 4.0 of the Lua programming language. Homeworld 2 uses Lua for in-game levels, formatted as, level files, AI, and as a rules engine for game logic. The developer sets many variables inside a Homeworld 2 game, including ambient light, background, placement of start positions and asteroids, among many other things. The soundtrack of Homeworld 2 was created by Paul Ruske, like the former parts of the series. Topic. Reception Homeworld 2 received a score of 85.1% at Game Rankings and 83% at Metacritic. It also received a 9 out of 10 from IGN. The scenery background graphics were particularly well received. Topic. Legacy. Intellectual property history Approximately a year after the release of Homeworld 2, in August 2004, Relic Studios was purchased by THQ for approximately $10 million USD. As THQ was considered to be a competitor of Sierra Entertainment and Vivendi Universal, the prospect of a Homeworld sequel remained unlikely as Sierra was still the owner of the Homeworld Intellectual Property IP until September 2007 when it was announced that THQ was in talks with Vivendi to purchase the license Homeworld franchise. In November 2007, THQ finally confirmed that it had acquired the license for the Homeworld franchise but didn't confirm a sequel maintaining that it had no comments on future games from THQ based on Homeworld. However, Eurogamer reported in November 2008 that Relic was "...definitely looking," at creating Homeworld 3, "...Warhammer 40,000, Dawn of War 2, Lead designer Johnny Ebert commented that, We're really happy the IP has made its way home, and yeah, we're definitely looking at it. We'll see what happens in the future. Ebert also commented that there was always a chance that the sequel could be in development behind closed doors. The strongest evidence indicating that Homeworld 3 is in development came from Relic's general manager, Tarney Williams indicating that three or four titles were in development while declining to elaborate further. In 2011 Relic confirmed that they would like to develop Homeworld 3, but they did not confirm or deny working on it. In early 2013 THQ suffered financial difficulties and liquidated their assets due to bankruptcy, Relic was sold off to Sega. The Homeworld IP was not part of this sale. Despite early speculation that Sega would attempt to rescue the IP, ultimately the Homeworld IP was sold to Gearbox Software. 
Gearbox announced that their initial plans would be to bring the existing Homeworld games to multiple digital sales platforms, but also created a forum on their website specifically asking for fan ideas about how the series should proceed. Blackbird Interactive, a newer developer made up of many of the designers of the original Homeworld, later offered their support of Gearbox's purchase of the IP. Topic. Prequel Recently, Blackbird Interactive, announced the creation of their game, Shipbreakers. Originally, the game developers focused on a game that carried the essence of Homeworld, but not directly related. However, Gearbox recently made an arrangement with Blackbird to rebrand Shipbreakers into Homeworld, Shipbreakers officially tying the game as part of the Homeworld universe. However, rather focusing on a true sequel, the game focuses on the past, it's a prequel, now known as Homeworld, Deserts of Karak. It was released on January 20, 2016. <laughs> Topic. Remake On July 19, 2013 Gearbox announced the release of Homeworld HD and Homeworld 2 HD remakes, along with the original versions of the games, for 2014. In March 2014 Homeworld HD was renamed to Homeworld Remastered Collection. After missing the original deadline in 2014, Homeworld Remastered Collection was released on February 25, 2015. The collection includes the original with LAN multiplayer gaming removed and remastered versions of Homeworld and Homeworld 2. The remastered versions are both built on the Homeworld 2 engine and have high resolution textures and models, new graphical effects, recreated cinematic scenes, and support for HD, Ultra HD and 4K resolutions. Multiplayer for both games has been combined into one centralized mode. The Homeworld Remastered Collection was released on February 25, 2015. Aspire Media released the Homeworld Remastered Collection for OS X via the Mac App Store on August 6, 2015.